Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this Wednesday edition of NMH at One. I'm your host, Prisca Agnolo, and thank you so much for joining us today. Jumping straight into our video news segment today with our first video. This morning, David Franz of the Solidarity Union led a meeting to renew the call for better employment conditions for security guards. The union, affiliated with the Namibia National Labour Organization, is calling for the reinvigoration of tripartite negotiations between government, security service employers and the unions to secure the first wage increase for guards since 2016 and 2017. Ogeta Craig spoke to him. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is David Franz. I'm representing Solidarity Union, which is an affiliate of uh, National Labour Organization. What we are doing is that we, we want to resuscitate the minimum wage of the security sector, where we uh, today had a meeting to get a mandate from the members, where we want to kick start with the resuscitation of the Namibia Security Labour Forum, where the Employer Association, which is Security Association of Namibia, they withdraw from the forum. They want to engage the employer associations plus the Minister of Labour and Social Welfare for them to intervene and facilitate the process. What we are going to do is that come first April, we are going to make sure that we engage and we have a feedback on the way forward. This is what we are planning to do. So the forum, does it? Is, there's no replacement, no, nothing else that tripartite uh, uh, opportunity to talk. Yeah, uh, this is the issue that the tripartite system which was created and been facilitated by Minister of Labor since 2002, the employer association, they withdraw, they use the sections which is saying a voluntary and the reason for them to withdraw from the forum is not really a valid reason. That's the reason now employees since 2016-2017 increment, they did not get increments to date. And the proposal which we are uh, seeking from the member and which we are going to submit to the Minister of Labor and the Employer Association is that employees who are currently earning $8.75, we want them to be adjusted to $10. And those at $10 currently, as you are speaking, we want them to be adjusted to $15 per, per hour. This is what we want to, to do. And uh, in general, uh, security guards in Namibia, what other benefits do they enjoy? Yeah, as we are speaking now, uh, security employees in Namibia, they don't have any benefit uh, since and they did not even get any increment because the transport allowance which they have they used to be deducted, the uniform they used to be deducted. Simple means that employees, they benefit nothing in the industry. Is the industry lucrative? To the, is there money in the industry? Yeah, uh, security industry is a labor hire and these employers who are, we call employers, those are middle people who are getting almost 70% of the pack and they, even the benefit which they are getting or the profit which they are getting, they are doing a, is, is, a, is, is an abnormal benefit, uh, I mean profit, because employees, employers, they are benefiting more than employees, which is supposed even to share 50-50, because they are selling people, they are not selling any products, they don't make any loss, and this is the reason we are saying it's a hard time now for the Minister of Labor and the Employer Association to start and engage in a tripartism with the organization. That's our call again to other industrial organization union, which represent the member, to come forth and fight together so that we make sure that realization of the minimum wage and the resuscitation of this forum really take place. Thank you very much. Sean Paul Smith of Angwediva has begun giving swimming lessons to children in his backyard pool a first for the town since there are no public pools for the community. Schmidt has big plans and has partnered with the Namibia Swimming Union for a bigger pool in the central location. Tunehole Mungoba submitted this clip.
The Rosewood Academy officially hosted its inauguration on Monday. The learners kicked off the celebration with a performance, followed by speeches including an address by Commerce Regional Governor Laura McLeod Kashirua. The Zone team was there. Moving on to our COVID-19 monitor. Over the seven days up to Monday, another 53 healthcare workers in Namibia tested positive for COVID-19. This increased the tally since last month, since last month amongst these professionals to 1,863. During the previous seven days, 48 healthcare workers tested positive. Of the total, 78% or 1,453 cases were reported at hospitals and clinics in the public health sector. Most of the new cases come from the Oshakati district. These 12 healthcare workers represent 21% or 1 in 5 of the 58 new cases reported in the Oshana region over the last 7 days. This ratio is much lower in other regions. In Hardap, the 7 healthcare workers on the map represent 10% of the 17 new cases, which is still quite high. In the seven cases in Oshikoto, they make up 8% of all cases and the eight cases in Vintuk only 3%. These two regions respectively reported 84 and 230 new cases. Tomorrow we will review the latest quarantine data. And now moving on to the front pages of our Namibian dailies. Namibian Sun reports that South African fugitive Emmanuel David, who illegally crossed the Orange River into Namibia last year, allegedly with the help of a police officer and fish corps executive, has been successfully convicted and forfeited $488,000 Namibian dollars worth of assets to Namibian authorities. The assets include cash, a Rolex watch and a gold necklace. Republic Kane reports that Air Namibia's liquidation is likely to milk the country's budget by billions. This, in turn, could make Namibia's already huge debt burden even bigger. 
and taxpayers will have to foot the bill. According to Cirrus Securities, government underestimated the cost of liquidating the airline. Algemeine Zeitung reports that the arrival of a COVID-19 vaccine, which was scheduled to take place yesterday afternoon, was significantly delayed. The first shipment of the highly anticipated vaccine was supposed to arrive by plane at Hosea Kutako Airport at 1.30, but due to a flight delay, it only took place several hours later. The Namibian reports that political commentators find former Justice Minister Saki Shangala's recent advice to Swapo as absurd. Shangala, who is currently behind bars in connection with the fish rot scandal, said Swapo should amend the country's constitution to align it with the party's political program. New Era reports that the German government has shown willingness to revise an offer of reparations to Namibian communities regarding the genocide in colonial Namibia more than a hundred years ago. This after the initial offer was rejected by Namibian authorities. These negotiations have now taken close to five years. And moving on to the inside pages of the country's dailies. Namibian Sun reports that a 46-year-old man died after he was reportedly attacked by an angry elephant at Okatsaidi village in the Omusati region on Sunday. The deceased has been named as Abner Iambo Petrus and ministry officials will put the elephant down. Republican reports that the high financial and emotional costs associated with divorce in Namibia may soon be alleviated if proposed amendments to the divorce bill are introduced this year. The amendments have been in the pipeline since 2016. If enacted, the current law, which has been described as archaic, will be reviewed. The Algemeine Zeitung reports that students from the College of the Arts demonstrated in Katatura on Monday against the sexual harassment of female students by mechanics and taxi drivers who work near the Katatura campus. The accused suggested that the way the students dress is not to blame for the harassment. Nobody should tell someone else how to dress. When students walk by here, they should feel free and not be constantly afraid of being inappropriately touched. A representative of the college, Anthony Alkrab, said. The Namibian reports that a soccer moon train crash that claimed one life and injured another person was a disaster waiting to happen, according to the town's residents. Soccer moon constituency councillor Siska Smith Howard said there have been calls for years to remove the railway line. New Era reports that a former hostel caretaker at the Karundu Primary School in Ochwarongo, who is charged with sodomy, has refused to take part in his trial. 50-year-old Mervyn Guyepa is facing 32 counts of rape or 27 alternative counts of having sexual intercourse with a child younger than 16. According to the state, he forced at least 10 boys between the ages of 13 and 15 to sodomize him after he stimulated their private parts. He is denying all of the charges. That is it for Namibia today. I've been your host Priska and Yolo live for NMA Chat 1. Here's to a lovely Wednesday afternoon and we look forward to keeping you informed again tomorrow. Do stay tuned for the weather as well.